How to navigate a toxic bathroom. Dr. Robert Kassar, eartheracademy.com. Okay, I'm traveling right now in California and I'm staying at a beautiful place that we have over here in Lake Sherwood. Okay, and I got the little casitas right here. But even though I'm staying in this super luxurious castle, right? It's still got a toxic bathroom. And how's that? Well, I'm going to go through a few things here just to be able to make it so you can get the idea about toxicity that's hidden in your bathroom. So number one thing, okay, when you're traveling, you have sometimes no way to be able to really navigate what kind of water you use is because it's municipal water. Municipal water has fluoride in it. It has chlorine in it and it has chloramines in it. It has a lot of different weird stuff in it. So how do you reduce the amount of toxicity when you're traveling or just when you're at home? So we've talked about this many, many times, but this is like a hidden thing. I'm traveling right now and I love California, okay? You can see the place that I'm at. Like I said, this is a beautiful little bubble. That's Lake Sherwood, like I said. I go fishing in that place uh, maybe two, three, four times a week. But the water in California and many places in the United States is fluoridated, okay? And that's one of the things that I don't like when I come here, because after about a week, I can super start to feel it in my skin. I can start to feel what fluoride does. And of course, if you take showers and rainwater every day, you can see exactly the, you know, the, the feelings and the detrimental effects it does on fluoride, on the way your mind thinks, just in general, a lot of things. But let's go through just because a lot of people don't understand fluoride, okay? Remember, fluoride is put into your, your municipal water supply, right? It's in your toothpaste. It's in a lot of psychotropic uh, uh, drugs, okay? Diet pills. Fluoride's in your new car smell. Fluoride's in a lot of bottles that we use, right? Fluoridated bottles, okay? Fluoride is used as a pesticide. It's a rat poison, and if you don't think so, you know, just off a little quick offshoot here, okay, you know, back in seventh and eighth and ninth grade, right, when you're going through school, you have a science fair. And my project was to be able to uh, see if the toothpaste that we use on our teeth was going to go ahead and kill this little rodent. So I fed the rodent a little bit of fluoridated toothpaste, and we wanted to find out, you know, if that myth was true that the fluoride in the toothpaste, it's about 1%, okay? And it says on the toothpaste, it says if you swallow this, call a poison control center, okay? And the little children are using all this stuff, right? And, and that's just in your toothpaste. Remember, it's in your water supply. It's, it's in a lot of uh, maybe even supplements, okay? Sodium fluoride, remember, is a toxic, uh, you can call it a poison, okay? Remember, it's rat poison, but sodium fluoride is the, the uh, end waste of the aluminum block uh, industry, fuel, a lot of different things. But fluoride is the waste product, okay? Especially in aluminum. So what do they do with it? Okay, remember, sodium fluoride is what they used in the so-called prisons, right? In the Nazi regime, what did they do? They didn't use it for, <laughs> for getting stronger teeth, did they? They used it because it made the people docile. Okay, so anyways, this is a big controversy in a lot of different ways is because, I mean, all you have to do is look into it and all you can do is, is navigate it because you can't stop its use. Of course, another question is why are we using this? Why are we using this? That's the question. Okay. Anyways, these are things I'm just going to go over just very quickly and then we'll go into the bathroom and uh, I'm going to show you even if you don't even have a, a fluoride filter, okay, you can still reduce the amount of fluoride, okay, that you're getting every day. But let's look at a few things I have written down here so I don't get off track here, okay, what fluoride has been linked. Okay, this isn't something new. You can look it up yourself. A lot of things on fluoride are hard to find right now because you're gonna just find all the things at the very top, why it's good for you, right? Okay, but it's well known in the medical literature that fluoride weakens skeletal health. 
Remember, the fluoride goes into the bone. It causes fluorosis, causes people to get little white lines in their teeth. I used to have that when I was a kid. I had fluorosis. Okay, fluoride going into your bones makes you weak bones, okay, makes you brittle bones. So could it be possible that fluoride that's going into your body is making you become maybe a little arthritic? Okay, because these are all different things that have to do with the bones. Are your bones achy? Remember, fluoride accumulates in your system, okay? It accumulates little by little. Your kidneys can reduce about 50 to 60 percent if you're an adult, okay, but the rest is inside your system, okay? Children have uh, the ability to be able to process through the kidney even less. So calcium fluoride is a natural occurring organic substance, okay? Sodium fluoride is an inorganic compound and it is not natural to the system here. Okay, this is an, a byproduct, again, of the fuel, okay, block, aluminum industry and a lot of different fertilizer industry, a lot of different industries that basically uh, have this at the end product. And what do you do with it? Well, it is a toxic poison, right? You can feed a rat a little bit of toothpaste that you're putting in your mouth and in that little science project, right, they didn't like what I did is because, you know, it's because we're showing you uh, mice die faster with a smaller amount of toothpaste. And the rats, of course, are a little bigger, so they die a little later, but no one could get past a half a tube. Okay? Now, and that's just a small tube. But anyways, if this, of course, is not calcium fluoride, if that was maybe in your toothpaste, that's a natural occurring element, but this is sodium fluoride. Okay, so fluoride, remember, is pretty much the closely to the same related compound as thyroid, okay, of iodine. And your iodine, of course, uses, uh, that's the main fuel for your thyroid, but fluoride competes with the iodine molecule. Okay, so if you have fluoride in your system, you know what happens to you? Well, you don't get your iodine and you get a bunch of fluoride, and fluoride, if you look it up, you'll find out that it's not good for the thyroid. It causes it not to work correctly. Maybe it causes you to get fat, remember? Why are you lazy and sluggish? Well, maybe it's because of fluoride. Cut it out of your system, at least reduce it. Uh, we know it calcifies the pineal gland, right? I mean, it's real simple. Pineal gland, the sodium fluoride goes in the system. The, the kidneys can only release 50 to 60%. That's what they say but at least they tell you it doesn't release at all. It doesn't get filtered through your system, so where does it accumulate? They know, the system knows that it accumulates in your pineal gland, which regulates your melatonin, your sleeping habits, uh, regulates a lot of the things on how you feel, okay? Your circadian rhythms, all these different pieces. So the pineal gland, which of course is also known as the interdimensional gland, okay? And this gland is very special and it needs care. And if it is calcified, that means it doesn't work, okay? so. Fluoride goes to the calcium. Uh, uh, excuse me. Fluoride goes to the to the pineal gland. Okay, and that's located right between your eyes here. And if you look up and see what the pineal gland is, you'll see that it does have a lot of functions that we need. But of course, no one really knows what it does. But we know what some of the things that it does. But it does calcify it. Okay, so uh, if you know, just real quick here, if you are taking in fluoride, and a lot of people are taking fluoride in from even chewable pills, they're putting it, in, like in, I told you, in supplements and stuff. Okay, it's in your new car smell, it's in your diet pills, it's in your water bottles. So this also has been known to accelerate female puberty, which means that females will go through puberty faster. Wow, okay. Detrimental to male and female fertility, which means that if you give this compound, fluoride, that it's going to go ahead and decrease the amount of fertility, okay, of males and females. Proof of fact. So remember, why is it going into the water supply? Well, maybe you breed too much, right? Okay. So it's super dry fluoride. Remember, it makes your skin really dry, feel like all of a sudden your skin feels just like chlorine does. It dries it out. What do you think it does to the inside of yourself? Like I said, when we get to the bathroom, I'm going to show you how to, how to decrease that very easily um, uh, without even a filter. So, you know, as far as cognitive effects, I notice every time I take a shower, I feel like washed in the brain, okay? And it's, to me, like I said, I know because I'm very sensitive to all these chemicals. And of course, look, it's perfectly clean outside, okay? It's, there's no pollution right now, okay? It's super clean, but I'm taking a shower in fluoride. 
And what does that do? Okay, if you breathe, okay, remember your skin absorbs everything that it touches. And if you breathe into the steam, okay, what do you think? You're breathing it in, like injecting it into your body. So that's not good at all. Especially when you find out all of the things that fluoride, well, is not really what you want to, to have done to you, right? Okay, so, of, you know, one of the best ways, let's go into the bathroom now. One of the best ways for you to be able to, to lower your exposure to fluoride, remember, is you gotta get an RO system, a distiller system. Watch our video on that, uh, creating a health, home health sanctuary. So, I'm in the bathroom here, and let's say, I want to take a shower, okay? But before I even get into this, turn on the light here. Before I even get into this, okay, let's turn this way. Maybe it's a little better light. It's a little dark in here. There we go. Okay, let's read the MSDS. And the MSDS, okay, is the material specifications data sheet, okay? And this is put out to go ahead and show you exactly what this element is. This is sodium fluoride, and this came right from there of, you know, from the MSDS. Danger, may be fatal if swallowed or inhaled, okay? Affects respiratory system, heart system, skeletal system, circulatory system, nervous system, and kidneys. Causes irritation to eyes, skin, and respiratory tract. Irritation effects may be delayed. Okay, that's what it says about fluoride. Okay, so how do you go ahead and lower the amount of exposure? Okay, so anytime you take a shower, if you don't have a filter on there, okay, and, and the only filter you can use is a whole house filter, that would be specially for fluoride itself, okay, to be able to, and they only work as good as you're just reducing it, you're not taking it out all the way, okay, but I set my temperature to about, about 95 degrees here, is because I don't want any steam to atomize in here, because if I'm breathing the steam, remember, it's one thing touching your skin, and the hotter the water is, the more it absorbs into your body. I keep this door open here, because I want ventilation. I keep my windows open. I'll open both those windows. Hey, if it's cold, well, <laughs> it, colder water is better for you, okay? But if it's cold outside, uh, yeah, you know, it's a little more of a challenge just about, but make it so it's like 95 degrees. If it's steaming, it's doing too much. Remember, 95 degrees is still a warm shower. But if you go in there to like 104, 5, whatever degrees basically, okay, when it's really hot and you're going in and it's things steaming and you got the door shut and everything and you come out and the windows are fogged, okay, you're breathing tons of this fluoro, uh, fluorosilicic acid, okay, which is a very, again, ag 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 aggressive and abrasive. So some people, this is what you can do when you're traveling, you can get yourself uh, the fitting that would go on to the shower head right here and then you'd have two filters, an activated a uh, charcoal filter right here, just a small one. So you hook in, take this off here, go ahead and hook in your hose right into that, that fitting, and you'd have two filters, an activated charcoal filter here, and you'd have a fluoride filter, and it just comes out of a hose, okay? I mean, that's if you wanted to travel, if you wanted to be more pristine about it. So what I do, like I said, is I just make it so my temperature is gonna go ahead and be low, so I keep my steam down. I keep the, the door open, let the air out, and that makes that, you know, at least that part cuts it down, even if you're traveling. Remember, you go to hotels, or maybe, again, you're just uh, at your house. And, and the fluoride filters, you have to find a real good one, okay? And the faster the water goes through the filter, remember, the less effective it is, okay? So, anyway, there's lots of different factors for fluoride filters. If you're gonna drink any water, remember distilled water is the best, okay? Remember the water coming out of your tap is only made to bathe, that's it. It's not made to drink at all. So, you know, let me just take this off the rack here. So if some of the things that basically look, these are the things when I travel, okay? Toxic bathroom is usually because you have also toxic personal care products. So I have a little, sometimes a little smells, I got frankincense right here. Uh, a friend, my friend distills that, uh, and then I've got some uh, distilled peppermint, distilled spearmint, I've got some pine oil, which is turpentine right here, okay, I use that for a lot of various things, uh, DMSO in case I need that, okay, and of course we've done lots of videos on eartheracademy.com 
uh, 10 bucks a month. Go ahead, uh, there's a lot of good information in there to be able to use these different things. What would you use them for? Well, I take these with me everywhere I travel. This is 10% iodine right here. This is uh, mag magnesium minerals, ionic magnesium minerals. This is a 12% H2O2, which I use on my toes, uh, on different parts of my skin. Let's say uh, if I get an infection or anything. And I also have 3% hydrogen peroxide because I just used that this morning in my ears to clean my ears, swimming in the lake. And I've got some coconut oil uh, and coconut soap right here. I have my water pick, watch the video we did on, on water picking, okay? I have floss and I'm not gonna go ahead and throw the floss out, I'll just keep using it. I'll just clean it off, put it back on here. You don't have to keep throwing out a piece every time you use it. This is my tongue scraper, of course. I make my own mouthwash here and the mouthwash that I make it with is about a half a teaspoon of borax, of about a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate. That's in a different package. And I put in about five drops of iodine in there, maybe in a couple drops of peppermint, and you've got yourself a great uh, mouth mosh. So also toxicity in the bathroom. A lot of people are using these scented, scented dumb, okay, make sh toilet paper. Remember, butt paper is, is filthy. You have to be very smart using this stuff. You don't want any scented papers at all. Nothing scented in your, in your wash when you wash it, okay? You just want free and clear non-scented toilet paper and every time that you do go to the bathroom well guess what you better wash those private parts there because toilet paper remember it's just like putting a piece of poop on your arm there and wiping it off with toilet paper and smell your arm the smell's still there so keep the hygiene going guys and also for for cleaning my teeth i use fossil shell flour right there watch our video on that on on whitening your teeth but that's pretty much my, my bathroom here. Just when I travel, I take all these things with me, okay? But the number one thing that bothers me when I do travel is because of this bloody shower, okay? It, it, after a while, I can just feel it poisoning me every day, making me slower, making me cognitively not, not be sharp, okay? So, you know, <laughs> no matter how not nice your house is, you can see I got a good view right here. No matter how high, you know, beautiful your house is, if you're using city water, you need to fix that. If you're using uh, different personal care products that are that are totally toxic, then well, that's that's again. Watch the videos that we do to be able to upgrade, enhance, and optimize. I also use cacao butter and coconut oil show you how to shave, how to do a non-toxic shave. Okay, I use those on my skin and I use those to go ahead and, and shave. So that's it. And also one last thing, look like I showed you in the last video I just did. I like to protect, I don't, you know, I have to use Bluetooth here, okay, because that's what they got. So I have a Bluetooth machine here, but I cover it with like five pieces of aluminum. Let the signal come out the back, that's fine. I don't need to get blasted this way. And the aluminum cuts down the wireless radiation and wireless radiation, of course, is microwave. So anyways, guys, we'll keep it going here. Uh, again, if you're new to this, you know, it's living just a, a cleaner life, a cleaner lifestyle. That's all you're trying to do, okay? To enhance, optimize, and an upgrade is part of the theme of, of Earth Academy. So, you know, taking care of yourself is, is, is because you know that your body's accumulating. And if your body's accumulating, right? Well, then you know that you have to go ahead and actually deaccumulate it, and that's a lot of the protocols that we share. Also, look up uh, the different videos, which is very important on parasites. Okay, parasites. Like I said, these are the number one thing that I would go ahead and say that a lot of people just have no idea that they're inside you. Remember, microparasites. How are you going to tame those guys down? Okay. And that's what I've been studying for over 40 years and doing these protocols on me. Remember, I'm 61 years old, shaved again, <laughs> getting shorter and shorter instead of longer like it was before. Okay, 61 years old. And, and this has been my daytime and nighttime job, you know, since 1984. Okay, just think of that. So, <clears throat> you know, parasites have always been in my uh, curiosity is because these little demons, these little tiny little creatures basically are mind manipulating, okay? They, they make you hungry, it's because you're not hungry, they're hungry, and you have to understand the psychology, okay? A lot of your thoughts, maybe, maybe you think you're, they're yours, but they're not. 
Okay, and these are what parasites. I don't care if it's sexual preferences. Remember, you remove the parasites in your system and all of a sudden you become more of who you are that you never even knew. And, and parasites do manipulate the mind. They do manipulate how you feel. They do manipulate uh, your sexual preference. Okay, how about that? And if you don't believe so, again, okay, there's lots of research on this. Read the book Parasite Rex. It's a good book to read just to go ahead and start. And you can see how these little insects, okay, these little parasites can control all these animals, okay, to do as thy will, okay? So if you think that, that you can't go ahead and accumulate these different parasites, well, you're, 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 you're fooling yourself. And the reason I'm showing you is the fluoride is because one of the reasons why a lot of parasites get a chance to attack us is because we're being, we're poisoning ourselves. We're not navigating the chessboard correctly. Okay, think of the place that we live in as the satanic matrix, and there's lots of trickery here, so you have to be able to, to see what, of course, like a video game, right, to go ahead and see how to, to navigate. You can't change anything here. You can't change anything. I've tried free energy, tried a lot of things, okay? If the system wants to go ahead and actually to put it into the system, then you will have it. If it doesn't want to have it, well, you're never going to have it. Remember <laughs> hydrogen engines and wind, solar wind turbines and magnetic motors, of course, they've been used f for, uh, well, we'll just say hundreds of years. From the last civilization to, uh, well, even maybe some of the places that, uh, or some of the inventors that are going to go ahead and show you what they've reinvented, like the magnetic motor, like I said. Okay, that's enough. Take care of yourselves, guys. Not stay strong, get strong. So you have to eat a nutritional diet, okay, if you want to get strong. And you have to work out and exercise. Watch our videos on that too, just to stimulate yourself. Remember, exercise is something that you really need to go ahead and take a look at, okay? And if you're not, not doing it, that means that real, well, you're not doing the work. Your body's physical and it does need maintenance. Your car is physical, it does need maintenance. Filters change, okay? All different types of lubrications added, right? So the, so the metal doesn't squeak. That's the food we put in our body. And if we put in different types of things like fluoride in our system, things that take the place of other things like glyphosate, could it be possible that glyphosate takes the place of glycine? And that's why there's a lot of problems with glyphosate. And glyphosate, if you don't know what that is, it's Roundup. Those are the herbicides that everybody uses and sprays all over the bloody place for some odd reason thinking that giving the plant AIDS, okay, which turns it brown, and when it rains, all that glyphosate, all that weed killer and Roundup and everything else goes into rivers, lakes, streams, and just keeps on doing what it does. Okay, anyways, the system goes deep. Okay, and like I said, my specialty, okay, or my curiosity has been able to see if we can navigate as good as we can in this matrix. And the matrix is made for maybe, maybe the more clever people, because there are lots of people in the matrix here that just service the matrix. And I look at those people sometimes as just background people, right? They just keep the matrix going. But there only are maybe a quarter of a percentage or maybe a half a percentage of the people that have the clever way of thinking that even want to show what they see, the, the perspective of what they see with their eyes, right? Because that's all it is, is what can you decode? And if you can decode more than those that cannot see, right? Do you want to be able to share what you see? And it's all an experiment because again, no one knows what a blade of grass is, guys, okay? Okay. We know what it is. We've named a lot of different things, but it's theory on how it grows. It's theory on how it makes and seeds and reproduces itself and clones itself. Okay, so if that's the case, well, all of the rest of the things that are grander than how a blade of grass works is all theory too. How the heart works, how my eyes even focus is a theory. You don't know, okay? <laughs> no, you don't. And if you say you do, it's theory. Okay, it's theory. Okay, Big Bang Theory, Relativity Theory, String Theory, okay, Evolution Theory, every theory you can think about, okay, Darwinism Theory, you came from nothing theory, theoretical physics, theory, 
okay, this is the way I think it is. This is the way I think the kidney works. This is the way I think. So critical thinking is a big piece in this world. And like I said, a lot of people, if your pineal gland is shut off and it's been fluoridated, you have no critical thinking. Maybe you don't even dream either is because the pineal gland is the interdimensional gland. So we've gone over also at Earther Academy some of the ways that uh, I feel that, in my opinion, also help decalcify the pineal gland. Remember, distilled water eats up all the, the calcifications of the body. Okay, it's not going to eat the minerals in you, but it's going to break down the inorganic, the rocks, the inorganic rocks inside you. All your rocks that are part of your bones and everything, those are organic material. Okay, inorganic material would be like chemicals and, and things, synthetics. Okay, a lot of different pieces uh, uh, like inorganic rock, okay? Okay, different th pieces, your body makes bioavailability of the minerals from small little tiny pieces called ions and it puts them in a form of life, of conductivity, of magnetism, right? And this is who you are, really. So if you lower your magnetism from fluoride, if you lower your cognitive levels to be able to, to navigate the matrix, right? Okay, it's, you're easy to trick. You're easy to trick. Remember, they use this for rat poison. Okay, and they still use it in a lot of different uh, poisons right now. Okay, for rodents. And like I said, do the, do the experiment if you want to. You can do it with insects. You can do it with any live animal. Give them some of that toothpaste. They'll eat it because they like it. I just remember my friend's dog ate a thing of toothpaste and it killed him. And I, that's one of the reasons being why when I did that science project, Shoot, the dog ate the toothpaste. I won't say what brand it is, but it starts with the big C and ends with an E, right? It's all the ones that we used, right? <laughs> and it killed it. So I was interested, like I said, to be able to see why is this in our water and why is it in just about everything? Like I said, fluoridated bottles, antidepressants, okay, medications, even supplements, new car smell, a lot of things used to preserve wood a lot of things they use fluoride because nothing can eat it How, if it can preserve wood what do you think it does okay it makes it so whatever's going to break down the wood can't and that's how it preserves it okay enough guys there we go aloha and we'll see you next time all right We'll see you. Okay, guys, this is a quick addendum. I wanted to, uh, to tell you about this documentary you may want to look at. It's called Fluoride, the Poison on Tap. There's many documentaries on fluoride, just for you not to believe, but for you to be able to, to get some more factual ideas about this so you can really, you know, navigate this, this you know, <laughs> it's, it's in the water supply, it's in your toothpaste, it's in a lot of things, so navigate it. Remember, you can't stop it. Okay, second thing is, you know, in the bathroom I showed you iodine, and iodine and, and fluoride compete, okay, for each other because they're almost the same type of halide compound, right? They're halide compounds. And if you've got fluoride in your system and you don't have enough thyroid, then it's gonna go in your thyroid and it's gonna cause a lot of detriment to the thyroid. Even says in some of the literature that it'll cause, cause cell death in the thyroid, and that's not good. Okay, so I follow the thyroid protocols that we do. And I, again, I use my mouthwash uh, with, with iodine in my mouthwash, okay? So I make sure that I have enough iodine in my system and you get iodine again from some foods, some sea vegetables and so forth. So anyways, okay, that's it. We'll go ahead and see you. I'm gonna go out on the lake for a few minutes and, and enjoy this beautiful day. Again, no aerosols. And you can see the mountains over there. Look at that. That's many miles away, and you can see it perfectly. Okay, here we go. Aloha. Uh, <laughs>